Play Center Tiger Basketball on KCLY is brought to you in part by Midwest Products of Lynn, Washington, Hanover, and Clay Center. Walt's True Value Lumber and Appliance. Green Team Cars of Clay Center. Propane Central. Subway of Clay Center. And Republican Valley Irrigation. And from the Tigers in Clay Center, Rocky Downing along with Bill Casper over in Washington, we have Bernie Van Stella, our studio chair, and Larry Walt Wallace joins us here on a Thursday night sub-state semifinal matchup and... Some state's always fun, Walsh, but when it's at home, I mean, it's a whole different feel. As Coach Jeff Edwards said in pregame, it's the first time in his coaching career his team has hosted a sub-state championship. This is a real opportunity for the Lady Tigers. Yeah, it sure is. Get their home crowd in it. It's good for the whole town. Good for the whole community. Bring the time to get bring people in. And, uh, and, and the Lady Tigers obviously have a great team this year, so that makes it even better. The Lady Tigers come in at 16 and 4. It's the third meeting with this team. And Coach Edwards also said during pregame, not to my surprise, that this is a team that scared him when we went to con. It was very close. The Lady Tigers found a way. They scared him nine days ago when they hosted here on a Tuesday night, senior night. They ran away with it in the second half and just blew them out. And they, he said they scared him tonight. And this a talented team. It's a very young team. They've only had three wins this season, which still is perplexing to a lot of us that watch these athletes perform and how they play. And this is a team at this point of the season you want to take care of quickly and not give them the idea that they can win the game late in the ballgame. Well, I agree. I didn't see the second game, but I was at the game in Concordia, and both teams struggled to score. Play center struggled to score. Uh, But we know we have a really good defense, so ideally – we could come out there and get the lid off the basket in the first quarter, get a nice little lead, then let our defense take over from there. That would be a good job for the Lady Tigers. We'll bring Phil Casper into the fold once again. He just gave the Valley High Lady Mustangs call as they advance to the championship for the state final on Saturday. They'll face either Washington County or the Yeah, it's, uh, it's like you and I were talking, Rocky, it's Valley Heights advance. They had very little trouble with Solomon. Washington County with his home court advantage, taking on Republic County. That's the team that you've seen. That's the place that our Tigers have seen. And it's a team that is well coached, and they are going to try to slow down Washington County. And that speed, it's going to be interesting to see what they can do as they get set to go. So we'll get you a little bonus coverage. We'll take a 30-second timeout, bring you back to Washington County right after this. The Citizens National Bank has a long history of supporting the students of our community on the mat, on the court, or in the classroom. Our support doesn't stop when the season is over or the school year ends. We believe in the value of higher education that is building our future leaders of our community and country. CMB offers a student checking. This account will transition you from being a local student to attending the college of your choice. Stop by and talk with one of our CSRs today. The Citizens National Bank, a member of FDIC. Back at Washington County, Phil Casper along with Bernie Fancella, studio engineer, Rocky Downing, and Larry Wallace. Await in Clay Center just a couple of minutes out. We are set to go. Underway here, tip controlled by Republic County. If you look at starters in just a minute for Washington County, Courtney Moore, Cammie Miller, Jenna Henneberg. Annie Otot and Mandy Halligan shot up by Republic County. Won't go. Rebound back to the Lady Buff. Madison Scott, Audrey Sheet, Callie Ballack, Kenzie Johnson, and Casey Beneshek for the Buff. Buffs do control it right now. Man-to-man defense for the Lady Tigers. No score early on. Against the bonus coverage is they'll about a minute and a half out from starters in play center and now a block shot by Courtney Moore back in the hands of Republic County blocked again by Moore but they'll stay too much contact that's going to send Madison Scott to the line shooting two first free throw up and short interesting to see what Republic County does with Washington County is they tried to stall Smith Center and it worked Second one on the way from Scott is good. So Republic County on the board first. They lead one nothing. Here come the Tigers. Two three zone cross court pass. Otah batted away by Republic County. Kenzie Johnson comes up with it. So a turnover early for the Lady Tigers. 
And now a steal by Courtney Moore. Number three on one. Down Todd off, or rather, uh, Henneberg off glass. Good. Nice play by Courtney Moore. Feeding Jenna Henneberg, and it's 2-1. Moore again meets Scott at half court. Scott's going to take her to the hoop and makes her pay. And it's 3-2. So no stall game yet for Republic County. They've come out pretty fast. Moore to Otod, top of the key. Left side to Miller. Baseline to Hennifer. Back up top, Moore. Inside, Aller Halligan turned, shot up, won't go, but rebound to Republic County. Now walking it down is Scott. She's going to be met at half court by Moore. Moore, really good defense. About a half a step ahead right now. Scott, Scott able to get rid of that ball. Left wing, she goes to Benesek. Benesek to Audrey Sheet. Now to Valak. Back over to Scott. Shot up, won't go. Batted out of there by Kinsey Johnson. Right back into the hands of Madison Scott. Scott dribbles left. Gets past to Benesek. Back to Scott, now on the right wing. Three ball from Johnson. Top of the key, won't go. Rebound, Aller Halligan. Outlet two more. Walks it down across half court. The Otot and right off the hands of Annie Otot. Out of bounds in Republic County leading 3 2. Ocon's going to get a break, is really beating herself up with that. So, Coach Diana Chetchley will give her a chance to rethink things and send Tess Chetchley in. Scott beats more across the timeline. Now has it on the wing. Inside feed is going to be knocked away. Callie Ballack trying to get that, and Mandy Alligan denies. So Republic County will inbounds under their own baskets. 5.17 left in the first. It's a 3-2 buff lead. Now feeding. Oh, what a play. Inside to Casey Beneshek, and it's 5-2. But Beneshek just snuck in there, and Lady Tigers lost track of her. Four on the wing. Gets it to Tammy Miller. Down low on the baseline, she goes to Henneberg. Henneberg is going to dribble back up top. Cross court to Cammy Miller. Back to Moore. Cross court to Henneberg. Up top, Cammy Miller for three in and out. Rebound to the buff. Of course, Cammy Miller with a good look just could not get it to fall. And now other hand, Kenzie Johnson beating Casey Benestack, and it is 7-2. Four and a half left in this first period, and the Lady Buffs have come out hot. They lead 7-2. Miller nearly throws it away. Back to Moore on the wing, drives lane, shot knocked away, and Republic County with it. They are ready to go in play center. Republic County leads it 9-2 now, 4.06 left in the first. Rocky, take it away. All right, Cliff, we appreciate it. We'll be posted uh, throughout the ballgame there in Washington as the Lady Tigers of Washington County taking on Republic County. The winner gets Valley Heights on Saturday here. The Lady Tigers of Clay Center will get the winner of this game will get Chapman, who uh, manhandled Smoky Valley in the opening game. Here's your starting lineups. Fort Concordia, 5 eight sophomore Sidney Bergman, 12.7 points a game. Tate Reynolds, 3 points a game, 2 boards, a 5 four sophomore. The Ashboss sisters, Micah the freshman, 6'2", 10 points a game, 7.5 rebounds. Jordan, the junior, 5'10", 11.4 points, 9.3 rebounds. And Jennifer Garcia, 5'4", a junior, 3.1 points a game. Lady Tigers have Allie Wright, Frederick outside, the sniper, 5'7", and a junior. Lauren Lane, 5'8", junior. She averages over 8 points a game at a monster third quarter on Tuesday on senior night. Caitlin Bonneblas, 8 points, 5 boards, 4 assists for the 5'9", senior. Courtney Hamill leads the team in scoring. She is averaging on the year at 10.3, 7.8 boards. And Sid Callaway, six and a half points to five eight sophomore in the opening possession, controlled by Concordia. And then the ball tied up as the Panthers tried to pass break it off of the opening tip off. And the Lady Tigers tie it up, and now they have the basketball for their first offensive look. Concordia going full court pressure. Allie Wright Frederick up the right sideline to Sid Callaway. So it's Callaway, Wright Frederick, Lane, Bonnet Blust, Hamill on the court for the Lady Tigers. Normal starting five throughout 
much of the season for Clay Center. Right, Frederick has it out between the circles. Rocky Downing along with Walt Wallace. Here's Bonner Bluff down low. Ball fake drives inside. Ball is shot is blocked down and low by Eshbaugh. And the rebound off to Concordia. Set play to go one-on-one near the block for Bonner Bluff. And it was denied that time by Jordan Eshbaugh, the junior. And she got the block down low. Here's Eshbaugh on the offensive end. Shot no good. Right, Frederick brings down the board. Alley up the right sideline with a sprint dribble. Stops near the Tigers' den logo there on the, each end of the court. Play center with it in the front court. Bonner Bluff's right wing beyond the arc. Holds outside, looking low. Gives it off out deep to right Frederick. One minute in and scoreless thus far. Here's Hamill outside with it. Jill Turner looks down low. They go to Bonner Bluff. Ball fake and right by Micah Eshbaugh. Lay in no. Rebound. Hamill and Bonner Bluff both had a hand on it. Couldn't come up with it. And the basketball goes to Sidney Bergman. Great look for the Lady Tigers down low. But now the Concordia Panthers score in transition. Bergman, who had a big game against Clay Center the last time they met about nine days ago, she has 12.7 on the season and has put Clay Center chat Concordia by a 2 nothing score. Clay Center with the basketball. Zone defense now by the Panthers. Bottom bluff outside the lane. Lauren dribbles across left and off to Callaway. To the post, they go down low and a foul against Micah Eshbaugh. A bump as Bonham Bluss was cutting across to the near side block. Kayla's working real good and down on the block there. She got she missed a shot last time. And she knows she wish she had that one back, but she got right back down in there, got aggressive, and got got the foul when they're trying to get the ball into her. Lady Tigers inbounds at a wing left off the baseline to Lane, right back to right Frederick. Skip pass across to Sid Callaway. Now Lane out top. To the high post is Bonnebluff. Back outside, Lane. Corner left, right, Frederick. Three balls up and down. The sniper drills one early, and the Lady Tigers have their first lead. Welcome sign to the Lady Tigers when they can hit from beyond the arc. They become extremely dangerous. Their defense makes them uh, such a great team to begin with. Now here's Eshbaugh inside, and she is fouled. A reach in against the Lady Tigers. And they call this on Warren Lane. It'll be her first. It puts Micah Eshbaugh, the freshman for Concordia, at the free throw line. With the Lady Tigers up 3-2. to two. Eshbaugh to tie it. Free throw is good. Her first point of the night. And we're tied at 3 with 5.51 to go opening quarter. Winner moves on to Saturday to face Chapman, who won by 16 over Smoky Valley in the opening game of the night. Second free throw misses, so we're tied as Sid Calloway brings it down court for play center. Free throw line, bottom bluff. To the corner, it goes to right. Frederick hit a three last time down opposite corner. Now behind the back, dribble drives underneath the basket, reverse lay-in. No, blocked, but a rebound to Bonner Bluff, and it's good. The bottom glass puts the Lady Tigers up by a bucket. It's 5-3. to three. Bergman walks it up the court. Fork and Cordy, a Lady Tigers, of course, in a man-to-man. Off it comes right side to Peyton Reynolds. Ball nearly taken away by Bonner Bluff. It is not going to bound. Right to Coach Jeff Edwards. Concordia inbounds from the sideline. And Valley Heights winning earlier on the 2A girls court. Now the inbounds pass goes off the hands of Berkman into the backcourt. And as they play on, Concordia keeps possession. Near steal by Callaway. Now Eshbaugh the drive. Tipped away by Bonneblast. Lauren Lane racing down the court. Berkman trying to catch her way in. And transition is good. The keeper of the hoop puts the Lady Tigers on top 7-3. Lane the run out on away by Bonner Bluff that time and the Lady Tigers have a two field goal lead. Left sideline now. Ball batted away again by Bonner Bluff but out of bounds. So possession goes to Concordia on the sideline. Savannah Kipfer in for the first time tonight. Sid Callaway gets the breather. So Kipfer in there with Lane, Bonner Bluff, Hamill, and Wright Frederick. In the corner left it goes to Reynolds for Concordia. Back to a look inside. Good move by Jordan Eshbaugh. Makes it a two point bar. Two-point ball game at 7-5. to five. Jordan's first bucket for Concordia. 4.35 to work, first quarter. Right Frederick working on the right sideline. Tripped up at a blocking foul against Jennifer Garcia. It will be the second whistle against the Panthers. 4.31 to work, first quarter. Lady Tigers have the basketball with a two-point lead. Great crowd on hand. It was... Pretty good crowd earlier. Certainly in this ball game, it's a good one as well. Seven to five. There's a timeout. Four four thirty one left to work. Let's check in real quickly with Bill Casper over in Washington. 
Fire Rock, thanks here. We're coming up on the end of the first quarter, about 30 seconds left, and Republic County continues to lead. Washington County has chipped away at it, but they trail 11-5. Republic County will hold for the last shot. Again, Washington County trailing 11-5. We're at the end of one. All right, Flip, thanks. We'll continue to get live look-ins with Phil Casper, and at halftime, get an extended look. Washington County trailing early against Republic County, so they've gotten out to an 11-5 lead. Again, Valley Heights will get the winner of that game on Saturday at 6 p.m. Here, the Lady Tigers, according to Panthers, playing for a right to be back here in the den Saturday at 6 against Chapman, who was a winner against Smoky Valley earlier. Play center with the basketball, leading by two. Right, Frederick comes in to Savannah Kipfer at the high post. Bottom plus, and she double dribbles with the basketball. Wanted to give it off to Courtney Hamill, and then kind of opened up for her, and she didn't realize the lane was going to split open, and she picked it up and then put it right back down and turns it over. So back the other way will come Concordia. Lady Tigers with some full court pressure on. Lane, great defense in the backcourt near steal. Ball is loose. Bergman has it. Now Bergman will dribble penetrate all the way to the paint. Wild shot no. Rebound put back up and missed. Now Eshbaugh brings it down then loses it out of bounds. So Bergman made a good drive. Courtney Hamill pretty good cutoff that time. It is a difficult shot. And a couple of looks in low by Concordia, but they lose it out of bounds. And Lady Tigers with a two-point lead still have possession. Midway point, opening period. Right, Frederick, guarded by Garcia. Crosses over to the right side. Wing right, tip for three ball. Bingo! The special K knocks in her first bucket of the night. And placing her as a 10-5 lead. Lady Tigers two for two from beyond the arc to start. Here's Garcia. Outside Reynolds for two. No, battle for the board. Courtney Hamill wins it again. And the silent assassin gives it outside to right Frederick, who will bring it across. Play center leads it now by five. Right wing deep, Kipfer. Back out top to lane. Left elbow, bottom bluff. Holds. Now to Kipfer. Beyond the arc, holds the stairs. Backs it out with the dribble. Out deep it comes to lane. Lauren gives it off to bottom bluff. The blast looking low. Back out deep to right Frederick. 3.18 to work. Opening quarter. Lady Tigers by five. Here's Hamill with it. Right wing. To kip for at the point. Now backs it out again to recue the offense. Left wing. It is Bonnebluss with it. Back door look. Hamill steps inside in a double team. In trouble. Out of the free throw line. Bonnebluss for two. Short. Long rebound is chased down by Concordia's Sidney Bergman. Panthers bring it the other direction. Under three to work first quarter. Clay Center leading 10-5. to five. Bergman dribble penetrates all the way in the lane. And a wild shot is good. And a chance to hoop and harm. It will be a three-point opportunity for Sydney Bergman. She now has four and a chance to go to the free throw line. In 41 of two at the strife. Bergman's first opportunity from the line coming up. That foul was called on Kip for her first. So Savannah with one, Lauren Lane with one in the foul situation for the Lady Tigers. Well, foul there on Savannah. I really felt that uh, Bergman was a little bit out of control on that. Free throw line up and good by Lauren Lane, or by uh, Sidney Bergman for Concordia. 10-8 now, the lead for the Lady Tigers is 2, 235 to work. Here's Hamill. Goes to work down low. Cut off. Outside to Callaway. Sid. Triple penetrate. She's fouled her way in. Before the shot, it'll be the third team foul called against Concordia. Washington County into the first. Trailing Republic County 13-5. At the end of one quarter in Washington. Washington County girls down 13-5. End of one against Republic County. Here are the Lady Tigers with the lead of two in the basketball on the baseline. Here's Bonham Blust out deep to Callaway, back in the corner right. Right Frederick, hit her first three. This one's strong. Weak side four. Hamill saves it in, but it goes to Concordia and Peyton Reynolds. Lady Tigers back on defense. Concordia, who saw the Lady Tigers jump out to a nine-point lead at half the last time they played. Here's Micah Ashball inside of her tie. Going to say the first, the last time they played here in the den, play center lit by nine and a half, and then really blew it out in the third quarter. Right now, Concordia hanging around. They have it tied, and now a travel against Lane. It was nearly tied up with Reynolds. Lane was on the ground, put the dribble down to stand up, and Coach Jeff Edwards arguing the call, and the official that call, saying that is saying the knee was down. She says that the official saying he says the knee came up before the dribble went down. I think 
I agree with Walt. Lauren Lay did the right thing there and got penalized for it. So 10-10 tie, and Concordia has it back just under two to work here in the first quarter, and it is intense early in the dare. Here's Bergman. Outside with the dribble. Top of the key goes to Eschbaugh. Micah Eschbaugh cut off in some trouble. To the lane, it goes down low. Shot swatted out of there by Pondebluff, but it ends up in the hands of Jordan Eschbaugh, and Concordia has a two-point lead, 12 in. A minute 31 to work. Play center back with possession. Right, Frederick. Left wing deep to lane. Lauren Lane to Callaway. Right side it goes to Hamill. Courtney looks back door. Here's Bottom Bluff. Ball face. Further in low it goes to Lane. Lauren rises up, puts it off glass. No. The rebound away to Micah Eshbaugh. Now Courtney Hamill forces a jump ball with the freshman Micah Eshbaugh, who is asking for the foul, but it will be place center of Concordia's possession on the alternate arrow. Garcia back in for the Panthers. Also for play center, Kipfer comes on, and Bottom Bluff will come out. Lady Tigers will put a little full court pressure on right now. 12-10. Play center down by a bucket. A minute 12 to work in this first period. Now near steal by Kipfer. Bergman chases it down. Kipfer still pressuring. Up the right sideline. Bergman across the timeline. Lobs it to the left corner. Jordan Neshbaugh pull up jumper for 2 No Rebound. Tipped off of play center. Both Callaway and Hamill were there. And it'll stay with Concordia on the baseline. As Peyton Reynolds comes back on for the Panthers. Bergman will inbound from the baseline, left of the glass for Concordia. Bergman lobs it out deep to Reynolds. Right Frederick out on her. Coach Edwards asking for a travel, doesn't get it. Now Lane, steal at the half court drive, but she's fouled on the run out. That'll be on Jordan Neshbaugh. And the keeper, again, with defense. I mean, she defends the best player on the other team almost every game and comes up time and time again with the basketball. She finally got the turnover. She got it come close a couple times before that and this time she finally does get the turnover run. Lauren Lane will inbound. Right Frederick has it under a minute to work first quarter. Lady Tigers leading here 12-10. Gets her left wing. Hit her first three ball fakes. It drives. Great look across pace. Sit Callaway for two. We're tied at 12. Callaway the bucket. What a feed from Special K. It's a 12-12 ball game. The front court comes Bergman. Left wing and deep. It was outside to Kaylee Miller. Now they skip it across to Reynolds. Right Frederick on her. Micah Eshbaugh, she travels with a basketball and the ball thing. Gets the bucket just inside the free throw line, but had to take steps to get in there and get open against Courtney Hamill. 12-12 tie. Play center with possession back in 24 seconds remaining first quarter. Right Frederick will bring it up the floor. Garcia shadowing her as she nears the midcourt stripe. Brings it across out of the front court. Find the back. Almost lost. And now we've got a double dribble. Right Frederick lost control as she went behind the back and picked it back up and put the dribble back down. But it had not been touched by Concordia. Addie Mullen in. Right Frederick will come out. 14.7 seconds left here in the first. Lady Tigers knotted up at 12 with Concordia. Panthers inbound from the sideline. Jordan Eshbaugh, front court goes to Mike Eshbaugh, and she throws it to the backcourt. Play center gets it right back. It's a mistake by Mike. You could see her look immediately and know what she had done, but now play center with 12.5 to work at the first and try to reclaim the lead. Lauren Lane will inbound. She will go front court to Sid Callaway. Sid, just in front of the timeline. High post, it goes to bottom bluff. Six seconds left. Right side wing in deep lane. Goes to the post trying to get it to Courtney Hamill. Knocked it out of bounds. And play center will have four seconds to inbound from the baseline now. Four seconds to work a 12-12 tie. They put him over near the corner. Right in front of the Tiger band to inbound this one. Right Frederick lobs it outside lane. Lauren back to front. Right Frederick inside the post. Hamill at the buzzer up. Off flash. No foul. We're headed to the second quarter. We are tied at 12. Lady Tigers, 12-12 tie with Concordia. Sub-state championship here in the semifinals. We're coming back in just a moment. Guys, we home improvement. We've got you covered. Did the recent storm cause damage to your roof? Call Geisler Roofing and Home Improvement in Concordia now to have a member of our team provide an estimate to restore your roof. Geisler Roofing and Home Improvement has been replacing and installing commercial and residential roofs for over 35 years. You can trust the Geisler team to get the job done right. 
Timing is everything on wheat fertilizer. It can maximize both yield and nutrient use efficiency, thereby increasing net profit for the producer. At Wilbur Ellis and Reed Seed and Feed, we offer a complete line of fertilizer and herbicides best suited for your fields. Timely control of weeds can limit soil moisture loss to weeds and prevent the deposit of more weed seeds in the soil, two factors that can benefit the next crop's yield. Our field specialists Brent, Allen, Darren, Kent, Mike, and Kenny at Wilbur Ellis and Reed Seed and Feed are here and ready to help you. End of one in the den. The Lady Tigers have a tie at 12-12. They got out to a four-point lead. Walk kind of looked like they had a little control, and then Concordia just made this a dog fight, and that's what they want this to be tonight, I think. Yeah, Concordia's being very aggressive, more aggressive than I remember them being the last time I watched them play. Lady Tigers all tied. Here's a play inside for Caitlin Butterblast out of the quarter break, and Concordia takes it away. Locked down court, tip by Callaway. Picked up by Eshbon, and a foul call against Wright Frederick inside. It'll be her first. Team's third. And it'll be basketball out of bounds to Concordia. It is uh, 340 left in the second quarter over in Washington. There was an injury timeout for a Republic County player. 1910, Washington County trailing. 340 left to go, second quarter there. Now on the inbounds, Jordan Eshbon, the catch with Hamill pressuring near the sidelines, stepped out of bounds. And play center gets it right back, still tied at 12. Chapman winning earlier against Smoky Valley. They'll be playing Saturday at 6. The winner of this game will get that matchup. Here's Callaway, right wing deep to lane. Short corner right Hamill. Back out top. Callaway attacks the paint with the dribble. With the last off glass goes Sid. She has four. So the Lady Tigers get the lead back. Down court with it, Jordan Eshbaugh. Now give it outside to Reynolds. Right Frederick, really pressuring. Five count on, she'll so get rid of it to Bergman. 7 9 to work first half. Lady Tigers lead it by 2, 14-12. Here's Bergman for the baseline. Full up jumper, 10-footer, no. We've got a battle inside on the rebound and a foul called against Clay Center battling for position. And this may be, I thought, right Frederick. No, they say Sid Callaway's first. Now both teams have been whistled for four fouls in the quarter. Concordia from the baseline, lobs it in. Micah Eshbaugh drives, wild shot, no. Rebound comes off to Courtney Hamill. Lady Tigers lead by two and bring it up the floor. Right Frederick, left in deep lane. How deep it comes to Callaway at the point, well beyond the arc. Now right sideline, right Frederick. High post, bottom bluff. Kick pass left lane, three ball on its way, short. Rebound weak side, Hamill rips it away, back up and fouled. Courtney Hamill, scoreless thus far in the first half, is headed to the stripe to shoot two. And again, in dead time when the ball's in the air, hardest work you play on the court, I guarantee you, is number 30, Courtney Hamill, every time. Yeah, that's her third rebound, and she's actually, the only shot she took so far in the game was that very last second shot of the first quarter until this one. I bet she got fouled for this one. Misses on the first free throw, and the foul was against Micah Eshbaugh, her second. So the 6-2 freshman will have two fouls here the remainder of the ball game. Early in the second quarter, Hamill makes the second free throw. That was the first free throw attempt for the Lady Tigers. They now lead by three, 15-12. Right wing deep, Garcia. Trying to post down low is Cameron Collins. Now Garcia the drive to give off to Bergman. Now she steps in on a hesitation move and gets to drop in. Nice move by Sydney Bergman, who now has seven in the game, and it's 15-14, play center by just one. Down court quickly, left wing, deep is Kipfer, Savannah. High post, Hamill, Courtney looks low. Back outside, Kipfer's got a good look for three, and her second one won't roll in. Bottom blast has the board, and it's taken away by Concordia, then taken right back by the blast. Caitlin Bonnenbluff. So Placeter keeps possession. Why look, Kipfer's three-pointer was down. It just rimmed around and rolled back out. 5.42 remains second quarter. Placeter by one with the basketball. Bonnenbluff holds outside. Now gives it away to Kipfer. He looks to the sideline for instruction. Now high post left elbow is Hamill. Courtney back right side wing for Lane. Lauren kicks it left to Kipfer. Looks down low, not there for Hamill. Back outside they go to Lauren Lane. Play center with the basketball and a one-point lead. 
Now Kipper dribble drives, leans underneath. The scoop shot won't go. The rebound off to Concordia. Good drive and effort by Kipper. Now a wild shot by Bergman on the other end won't go in. Hamill gets the board. Play center brings it back the other direction, leading by one. Kipfer in the front court. Brings it out top, barks in order to her teammates to set up the offense, now gives it off to bottom bluff. Caitlin inside, great seal by Hamill. She's fouled again. She's headed back to the line. Courtney Hamill, the seal of the defender behind her on the block. She has a lane wide open, and Bonham Bluff's found her that time. And a little interesting strategy by Concordia. They do not want the, the ball in the hands of Allie Wright Frederick, so they're uh, they're keeping really close ties to her. They let anybody in. They'll let the, the other guards the play center handle the ball and not, not and give them some space, but they're trying to keep the ball out of Allie's hand. It's a great point. Last year, they played a lot of triangle two, box and one stuff against play center. Hamill hits one of two at the line again. Clay Center's lead is 16-14. So I think Clay Center a little more prepared coming into this season for potential what you call jump defenses by the Panthers. 16-14, Concordia with the basketball. Clay Center forcing the man-to-man. Eshbaugh, wraparound pass to the baseline, knocked to the bounds off of Clay Center. And it will stay with the Panthers on their end. Addie Mullen back in for the Lady Tigers. That'll give Allie Wright Frederick a breather. Wright Frederick, you don't even think about it anymore, playing with a stress fracture in her leg and has been in a boot and on crutches at times during the week during practice, but gets enough in to be prepared and you never notice it during a ball game. She gets a break here with Mullen back in at 16 14. Baseline right, it comes to Eshbaugh, lob inside, taken away by Courtney Hamill. The silent assassin with the steal and place center has it back, leading by two. Midway point, second period. Kipfer runs point. High post, it comes to Hamill. Courtney, left elbow to Callaway. Sid backs it out with the dribble. And now looks at a Concordia defense. Gives it off to Bonham Bluff. Back out top, Kipfer. Savannah backs it out again. 3.45 to work here in the second. Clay center by a bucket. They have the basketball. Bonham Bluff, back door left. Callaway, stop, set, takes it up strong. No foul called, and it's rebounded on the weak side by Kipfer. This will be against Concordia, and Savannah's going to have a chance at a one-and-one. So Kipfer has three points in the game on the, the lone three-pointer from either side. Well, correction, Wright Frederick and Kipfer both with a three. Now Savannah to the line for a one-and-one chance. One and one as Concordia substituting in. Jordan Eshbaugh just picked up first, second foul. So now you have Micah and Jordan Eshbaugh, both with two fouls each, could be huge as this game plays itself out. Micah back in with two fouls. Jordan gets a breather. Savannah Kipfer to the stripe, a one and one chance. Free throw up and free throw good. Kipfer has four. The Lady Tiger lead is 17 14. They led 10 5 to begin the ball game play center, and Concordia really got it going back and forth. Kipfer drills both. She's got five to lead all scores. That is a huge two, especially when you get a one and one. You hit, hit the front end of that one and one, and you get a get a chance to score. Those kids, those points add up as like the game goes on. Lead goes to four. Bergman to inbound. Kipfer near steal as the Lady Tigers full court pressuring. Now Bergman brings it up herself against Callaway. Still in the backcourt, brings it across. Bergman just a sophomore, good one for the Lady Panthers. Here's a skip pass left. Back outside. Callaway near steal. Bergman has it. Dribble drives to the paint. Lauren Lane draws the charge inside. And the Lady Tigers get it back. The keeper of the hoop draws the charge. And the Lady Tigers with a four-point lead have possession again. Huge play inside. And it's the second now on Bergman. Helps side defense. And to know when to step and not just defend but take the charge and Lane did it to perfection that time. That's probably the three most important players for Concordia team also that have two fouls each. Absolutely. The truth. Kipfer, left baseline, beyond dark. Ball takes it back outside to Callaway. Three minutes left first half. Play center leaves it here, 18-14. High post, it comes to Hamill. Courtney looks at the three, doesn't take it. Kipfer will at the points. And she's fouled. She'll shoot three free throws. Almost had a chance 
at a four-point play. That ball again, the second time for Kipper. Rim dim, rim back out, but now she gets to shoot three. Savannah with five points in the game to leave the Lady Tigers in scoring. The play center up by four. They have three free throws coming here. And Special K knocks in the first of these three. 19-14 now, play center by five. Second free throw up. This one rims off, but she gets one more. And Walk will get the reference. Artis Gilmore made a living off the old three to make two in the NBA. It's been a long time since uh, the three to make yeah. two. But it works here for Kipfer. I don't know how old our audience is <laughs> listening out there, but a, some of them. A minority be. might get it, right? That's four or five now at the line for Savannah Kipfer. She has seven points, and it's a six-point. Lady Tiger lead with 252 to work. Halftime at Washington, 21-13. Republic County still the lead. Howler Helligan, Delay, and Wyatt with three each for Washington County. Casey Benishek has six for the Buffs. Again, 21-13. Washington County trailing. Republic County there at halftime. 2.52 to work here. Second quarter. Clay center by six. Micah Eshbaugh gets the full court pressure in the backcourt. Now puts dribble down. Down the pass down the court. What a layout by Caitlin Bonnerbluff to dive and tip the ball away and come up with a steal. Like a center fielder cutting off the gap in right center. Low cane type of play and defense by Bonnerbluff. Now play center inside. Here's Hamels to the lane. Offensive charge. She was going strong at Jordan Eshbaugh trying to pick up her third, and they call her for an offensive charge down low. Well, First foul on Hamill. I'll pick it two by Courtney because Courtney has put their three players back on the court that have two fouls, and that could have went either way. Absolutely, yeah. It was not a typical charging call. It was a, kind of a lower-the-shoulder call against, and now they call it the other end against Concordia, and this may be against Micah Eshbaugh, which would be her third, and it is. So the same type of call, only without the basketball in there. Their hands... This time against Eshbaugh, and it's her third foul. She quickly comes out, and now a timeout taken by Coach Jeff Edwards. 2014, 218 to work second quarter. The Lady Tigers lead by six with possession. You're listening to Lady Tiger basketball on PCLY. This is Keith Blake with Union State Bank and Clay Center inviting you to come in and see Galen, Brandon, or myself for all your farm lending needs. We finance real estate, livestock, machinery, and equipment, and operating lines of credit for all your input needs. Our rates are competitive along with flexible payment plans to match to your cash flow. Stop by the main bank or give us a call to set up an appointment and let us show you how we can help with your entire farm lending requirements. Union State Bank, member FDIC, and Equal Housing Lender. Hanson Ford has your next vehicle on the lot, and they have the financing program to make it happen. If you're in the market for a certified pre-owned Ford vehicle, now through April 4th, you can get 2.9% APR for up to 66 months. Picture yourself in a Ford Edge, Escape, Explorer, or Expedition, or maybe a Ford Focus, Fusion, or F-150. Look them over, take a test drive, and make your choice. Get there while the selection of Ford vehicles is best at Hanson Ford and Clay Center. 2014, again in Washington, there at halftime. Washington County trailing by eight at the halftime break against Republic County. Here are the Lady Tigers, 215 to work second quarter. Play center up by six. Callaway down court with it. Quickly to bottom bluff to the free throw line. Kick out right side wing to right Frederick. Back out deep for Callaway. Two minutes to work first half. Play center leads it by six. To the post, it goes to bottom bluff. Back to the bucket. Corner right. Callaway wants the three and drills it. Sid Callaway now with seven on a three ball in the right corner, and the Lady Tigers lead it by nine. Down court it comes to Bergman. Slides in the lane. Shot blocked by Bonnerbluss. Bergman gets it back, then fouled by Kayla. It'll be the 16th foul, so no free throws. Basketball out of bounds on the baseline. 23-14. Play center leads it by nine. A minute 44 to work here in the second quarter. Bergman to inbound. Looks low. Now needs to get it in somewhere, lobs it, and does get it inbound and gets it right back in the corner right to the post. He goes to Reynolds. We'll back it out with a dribble. 
Reynolds back up top. Callaway bats it away. Concordia does crack it down, staying in the front court. Reynolds right Frederick out on her. Great man-to-man by Clay Center. Now Reynolds picks up the dribble. Lane near steal. Bergman takes it toward the paint. Leans inside. Shot won't go. Tough look. Almost got it to roll in. The rebound to Callaway. Play center could bump into a double-digit lead this time down the court with a minute 13 to work second quarter. They have their biggest lead of the contest now at 9, 23-14. Here's Callaway outside between the circle. Left on the elbow to bottom bus. Callaway hit a three last time down. Now holes outside. A minute to go first half. Play center by nine. Here's Hamill. Backdoor looks, bottom bluff in the lane with the left foul. She'll head to the stripe. Caitlin bottom bluff to shoot two. And the foul goes against Cameron Collins of Concordia. Two fouls on Collins. And for the Panthers, who are not real deep on the sideline as far as substitutions, the foul situation could become real serious for them. Bergman. Eshbaugh, that's Jordan, and now Collins, two fouls each, and Micah Eshbaugh with three fouls. And Caitlin Bonnablis making the first free throw makes this a 10-point ball game. Second win rims off. Hamill keeps it alive, and it's tipped right to Lauren Lane and knocks it in. And it's the 26-14 Lady Tiger lead with 45 to work first half. Hamill kept it alive. Lane gets the payoff with the bucket in low. Here's Bergman to the corner, Garcia. Dribble penetrates, cut off by Hamill, across paint, ball loose on the ground, knocks it to the bounds off of. That's off Concordia, Clay Center's possession with 35 seconds to work first half. That's eight turnovers, first half turnovers that the Lady Tigers have forced. Yeah. They've scored a lot of their points from the free throw line and hitting three pointers, the Lady Tigers have. Yeah, they've hit uh, three threes now. Guns been very strong from the stripe. And the defense, again, so dominant. Addie Mullen wants the three. It's short. Rebound pulled inside by Bergman. 18 seconds left here in this first half of play. Lady Tigers lead it by a dozen. Drive by Bergman. Foul called against play center on the drive. It'll be a one-and-one chance for Sidney Bergman, who has seven points to lead in 40 in scoring. This will be a one-and-one opportunity for the Panthers sophomore. Foul was called on Addie Mullen, her first. Bergman, a one and one chance. Front end up and good. She has eight. Kipfer with seven. Callaway with seven for the Lady Tigers in the scoring column to lead the way. The eight points from Bergman leads all scores, and she's got one more free throw now coming her way. The lead is 11 for the Lady Tigers with 13 seconds to go first half. Bergman. Haley Spoh, she is three of three at the stripe. She'll come out. And Cordia trying to protect some of the foul situations they're in. Lady Tigers have 13 seconds to work. Callaway down court quickly, 10 seconds. The bottom bluff. Caitlin holds outside now with five. Right Frederick. Ball fakes, dribble drives. All the way to the baseline. Runner on its way and good. The sniper drills it right before the halftime break. The Lady Tigers will go to the break with a 12-point lead. Wright Frederick beating the buzzer. 28-16. Play center leads it. We're at halftime. You're listening to Lady Tiger Basketball on 100.9. Reduce costly irrigation downtime next season by preparing your center pivots, corners, and linears now. Your local Valley dealer has a preventative maintenance program that protects your investment through the cooler weather and makes sure your irrigation equipment is ready for the next growing season. Don't take a chance on your machines breaking down when your crops need water. Contact your local Valley dealer today about a preventative maintenance program. See Republican Valley Irrigation or call 632-5588. Good service is hard to come by. If you aren't getting the service you deserve from your propane provider, now is the time to contact Propane Central. You always get more than propane when Propane Central delivers. Competitive pricing, flexible payment and delivery options, 24-7 accessibility, and of course, good old-fashioned customer service. Call today and ask how Propane Central customers earn free gas. Wallace True Value has been selling Speed Queen washers and dryers for about two years now, and we haven't really tooted our own horn about it. We really haven't had to, as a three-year top-to-bottom warranty on parts and labor on the mechanical timer washer says a lot about it by itself. 
not to mention the five-year motor warranty and the 15-year transmission warranty. The digital model carries a five-year parts and labor warranty. If you want to know more, see these reliable 25-year rated machines at Wall Street Value in beautiful downtown Clay Center. Add big flavor to your next get-together with Subway Catering. Featuring good-to-go boxed meals with a side and freshly baked cookie, crowd-pleasing giant subs, and piled-high sandwich platters overflowing with flavorific choices. All made the way you say with everything you love. Subway Catering is simple, satisfying, with something for everyone. A great value for any budget. Visit Subway.com to order and let us take care of any occasion. Subway. Cater fresh. Some catering orders may require 24-hour advance notice. 28-16, Lady Tigers now with a 12-point lead. They stretch it out in the second period for being tied at a dozen in the end of the first quarter. So they outscore Concordia 16-4 to in that second period. Sydney Bergman does lead the way all scores with nine points. Three field goals. She has three for three at the stride. Four points from Jordan Eshbaugh. Micah Eshbaugh with three. And the Lady Tigers, well balanced again. Seven points, Savannah Kipfer. Four of five at the line. She had a three. Sid Calloway has seven, including a three-pointer. Allie Wright-Frederick, the buzzer beater, and a three-pointer. She has five. Lauren Lane with four. Two from Courtney Hamill and three from Caitlin Bonneblas. She has the 28-16 halftime lead of 12 for Clay Center. We're going to take a, a quick 30-second timeout, and we're going to check in with Phil Castro. He'll give us a little bonus coverage. Washington County trying to come from behind as they play in the third quarter. We'll hear from Phil Casper after this. Hey folks, Bill Rice from the Green Team. We're in the middle of our 2015 model year clearance and we have got some great deals. How about this? A Jeep Wrangler 2015 model with the Alpine stereo. It's got the automatic. It's a hard top. It's got the alloy wheels. Beautiful Jeep Wrangler four-door, four-wheel drive for under $33,000. Only $32,908 for a brand new Jeep Wrangler and that's at the Green Team at 802 West Crawford or check us out on the web at greenteamcars.com. 28-16 here at the half. We're headed to third quarter action over in Washington as the Lady Tigers of Washington County facing Republic County on the comeback trail. All right, Rock, thanks. And just like that, there's a timeout on the floor here, but we'll get you caught up. It was a 21-13 Republic County lead at half. Now, Washington County is starting to chip away at it and finally starting to hit some shots. They trail six. It's 25-19. That injury uh, that we alluded to earlier was to Madison Hammond of Republic County of the bus. She is back on the bench. She went down hard on the floor and really uh, took a hard shot to the back of the head. Does not appear she'll be back in, but uh, she is back on the bench and talking with her teammates. So great news there. Courtney Moore with the basketball for the Tigers. They have not led in this game. And now Mandy Hall Aller Halligan thought about three. Now she's going to kick it back out to Moore instead. Howard Halligan was wide open, and now Annie Otod will drive lane from five feet, and she's fouled, can't get the shot to go, but Annie Otod will head to the line shooting, too, and Otod has really been frustrated in this game from, really, from the start. This cold has yet to score. Free throw from Otod up, and she finally breaks that drought. And Washington County has cut it to five. The Lady Tigers clawing their way back into this. This was really in danger of getting out of hand. Otot second falls, and it is 25-21. This is as close as Washington County has been since the first period. Full court press near Steele by Washington County, but the Buffs do recover. Lady Buffs with the basketball. Madison Scott guarded by Courtney Moore. Now double feed. Now baseline. Kenzie Johnson for three. Strong. Backside rebound to the Buffs. They'll get another chance. They'll bring it out front. Kenzie Johnson baseline. She'll try the same shot. This one misses everything right into the hands of Annie Otot. And now she's trapped and does get rid of it. Finds Lauren Wyatt. Now Moore down court under the basket as Chetcherly goes up strong and she's fouled. So Tess Chetcherly will head to the line shooting two, 25-21. And all of a sudden, Washington County... Making some noise. That's Chetcherly with two points in the first and now three. Chetcherly will have one more. It's a 25 22 ball game here. 21 13 at half. Republic County gone up by 10. Chetcherly hits both. 
but we've got a two-point game, 25-23, down court quickly. Johnson has nowhere to go. She's going to bring it back out. Started by Wyatt. Wyatt all over her. Johnson goes baseline to Madison Scott. Scott tries driving baseline, cut off by Moore near steel. Now back out front. And now a foul is going to be called as Kendra Scott trying to drive the lane. That foul is going to be called on Lauren Wyatt. It'll go out of bounds to Washington, or to Republic County, rather. A foul on the floor, and now trouble getting it in, and now they do get it into Johnson, back up top to Scott. Man-to-man defense from Washington County. Scott to Scott, up on top. Back to Johnson on the left wing. Kenzie Johnson, five-footer in the lane, strong. Rebound Washington County. Annie Otak comes out of there with it, and now a foul is going to be called on well, that's going to be on Republic County. They'll call that on Kendra Scott. And that is the fifth team foul on the buff. Otod will inbound. Two more. We've got a two-point game. 25-23, Washington County. A chance to tie. Right wing, Wyatt. Baseline to Hanover. Back up some more on the wing. Otod, top of the key for the lead. Three, Yes! Annie Osa, three, and it's 26-25, Washington County, the first lead of the game, and now steal on the other end by Jeff jump ball. That is possession, Washington County. 26-25, and just like that, Washington County has outscored Republic County 13-4 in this third period. 26-25, Otot, baseline, other end, drives, kicks it out, left wing, Wyatt, back up top, Moore, three, top of the key, no, strong, rebound to the buff. 304 left in the third. Back to Johnson, now Scott. Directs the offense, shook both left, guarded by Moore. Looking inside, nothing there, near steel, Otot. Johnson has it, right wing. To Kendra Scott. Drive baseline. Nothing there. Back up top. Johnson. Cross court. Madison Scott. Inside. To Poxa. Turn around. Jumper. Yes. Ashley Poxa. For six points. 27 26. Republic County. Otas. Baseline. Took a step. So with two and a half minutes left, 27 26. Republic County leaves one. Again, when they're ready to go and play center, Rocky will let us know. We'll get you back for second half action. Play center leading 28-16 at halftime of that game. Republic County inbounds. Press on from Washington County. Into Madison Scott. Just get it across the timeline. Scott guarded by Moore. Goes right. Here's steal by Moore. Top of the key. Kendra Scott, now back up to Madison Scott. So Dallin Sheets directing his offense, not liking what he sees. Now on the wing, Stu Beneshek drives in the lane. Yes, Casey Beneshek, her eighth point, and Republic County goes back up by three. Moore gets it down court, and they are ready to go in play center. 29-26, Republic County leads a minute 46 in the third. Back to you, Rocky. All right, Flip, we always appreciate it. We'll get back in with Bill to get you caught up as uh, Washington County's made hit a real ball game now here. Play center leads it by a dozen. Concordia opens up with the basketball to begin the third quarter. They get it down the court. Peyton Reynolds in some trouble now on the sideline. Micah Eshbaugh and Courtney Hamill will tie it up, and that's almost identical to the beginning of the first half. Hamill tied it up with Eshbaugh, and the alternate arrow went to Clay Center. The same to start here in the third. Lady Tigers lead by a dozen. Savannah Kipfer, Sid Calloway lead the way for Clay Center with seven points each. Sidney Bergman leads the way for Concordia with nine. Calloway holds out of the top. Right side wing to Lane. Zone defense. Skip left to right Frederick. Short corner to Hamill. Out top Calloway. Right corner is Lane. Great look inside. Hamill open for her first field goal. She has four. He plays it and now leaves it by 14. Great ball movement, patience, and then a dime thrown from Lane to Hamill for the easy deuce inside. Here's Reynolds. Five count on by Wright Frederick. No five call yet. 
had to be very, very close. Coach Edwards calling for it. Now they get to travel on Micah Eshbaugh as Courtney Hamill was pressuring. So play center comes out, gets the ball in a turnover, in essence with a jump ball call, and now they turn over Forrest on the travel. Right, Frederick brings it across. Left and deep, Callaway. 30-16, to 16, just a minute into this third quarter. The Lady Tigers lead it by 14 points. How deep is Callaway? She will hold to see if Concordia comes and pressures it all. Not a bottom blush, the left elbow back out deep for Callaway. Hamill, bottom blush low, Lane and right Frederick on the wings. Now Callaway gives it to bottom blush. Cuts through the paint by Lane and Hamill. Bottom blush still holds outside, no pressure on her. Remember, Concordia has three fouls against Micah Eshbaugh, Jordan Eshbaugh, and Sidney Bergman, both with two fouls. There's a backdoor look inside. It is Bonner plus the lane. Lauren has six. The Lady Tigers now lead by 16. Down court it comes quickly with Reynolds. Now Bonner plus the steal, the takeaway. The run out the other end, no number. She'll back it out and set off there. Play center could not have asked for this third quarter to begin any better. Three straight field goals, and they've stretched the lead to 16 points. Correction, two straight field goals, but three straight possessions empty for Concordia. Now the look down inside. Here's Lane again. Lauren up, no. Rebound. Hamill weak side. Muscles it back up through a defender. No foul is called. Hamill still finishes. She now has six. The lead now to 18 points. Garcia works it across. Callaway has her. Kick out left and deep to Bergman. Bergman against Lauren Lane. Puts a couple of dribbles down. Now hands it off outside to Garcia. Now Lane picks her up, turns her inside. Ball loose. Right, Frederick takes it away. They have numbers going the other way. Now Wright Frederick loses it out of bounds. Trying to look down court to get numbers. The official running interference, and Coach Edwards sharing a chuckle with that official who, uh, in essence, helped defend Wright Frederick from getting the basketball. 34-16, the lead is play centers. A timeout on the floor. Flip, let's send it over to you and check in with Washington County. All right, Rock, 3.9 seconds left in the third. It's 29-26. Republic County lead, but at the line shooting one and one is Lauren Wyatt for Washington County, and she hits the first. So we can keep it here for just one more free throw. We'll give you a look as we end the third period. One more on the way, a chance to cut this to a one-point game. Free throw up, and good. Lauren Wyatt, the sophomore, hits both with two. Republic County will get a shot, ball loose. Washington County comes up with it, and we're headed to the fourth. 29-28, Washington County trails Republic County, headed to the fourth. We'll check back in when we can. All right, Flip, we'll send it over to you when we get into the break in action here. What a game for Washington County. They were down eight at halftime and down by the double digits throughout much of the game, and now they've got it back within one. They have had a lead in the third quarter, and they're just now beginning the fourth in Washington County. Here the Lady Tigers lead 34-16. The basketball belongs to Concordia. Out of the timeout. Frank Cordy goes to Garcia. Shuffle team with Callaway and Bonnebluss. Now give it off outside to Bergman. Lady Tigers in that man-to-man. 5-18 to work third quarter. They're up by 18 points now. We've got a foul against Hamill out deep. Trying to pressure against Sidney Bergman. Savannah Kipfer checking on for Clay Center. I think the, the halftime talk included... Turning up the defense, they've turned the ball over four times the Lady Panthers have so far, and uh, getting the ball into Courtney Hamill inside. And now a turnover again on Concordia. It was caught in the front court. The momentum of Sidney Bergman took her to the back court, so had another That's not five. there in the turnover call. Five and two in the two minutes and forty five seconds here wow. in the third quarter. It's very reminiscent of the game that was played here Tuesday on senior night. It was a nine-point game at half, and they absolutely blitzed it in the third quarter, and they've got that start at least with this third period here tonight. Here's bottom bust down low. Hamill, once again, they get it inside. Now back out deep, it comes to right. Frederick, ball nearly taken away. Now she's tripped up, and a foul called on Garcia. First team foul now on both squads here in this third period. Yeah, defense is ratcheted up, and, and of course a conscience effort, as Walk mentioned, to get it down inside to Courtney Hamill. Here's Lauren Lane off the inbounds at the point. Turns and squares up, looking low. Not there. Now it has it tipped away from behind, but able to run it back down. And now looks for help after she uses her dribble and gets it off to Courtney Hamill. 
Hamill, right wing for Kiffer. Savannah, baseline right, Hamill. Back out top for Bonnebluss. Ball nearly tipped away. Now the corner left. Right, Frederick. Good look for three. It's short, though. Hamill brings down the board. Had it tipped away. Now tried to save it back into right, Frederick. And a little tie-up between Garcia, who was frustrated on the uh, last foul that went against her. So a little extracurricular. Right, Frederick with a grin to her sideline and hands in the air, walking the other way. And the official had a quick talk with Garcia before they put the ball back into play. 34-16. Bryce Frederick will come out. That was her second foul. I didn't really see anything to provoke the little outburst. <laughs> I didn't either. No. Okay. I think just frustration. Yeah. A little bit in this third quarter, not being able to get. And they had a shot attempt in this quarter. Here's Bergman down low. There's one anyway, missing. Rebound to Kipfer. And Savannah clears it from Lady Tigers with an 18-point lead. That may be the first shot attempt that Concordia's has this second half. Yeah, that's my turn. Wow, it could be. 34-16, high post is Hamill. The free throw line goes right wing to Addie Mullen. Addie back outside to Kipfer, around left to Bonnebluff. Lane trying to post. They go free throw line. Hamill back inside. Here's Lane, strong to the glass. She's fouled. She'll get two free throws. Couldn't get the shot to fall. Almost did. And now she'll step to the line to shoot two. She had eight points in the third quarter against Concordia in that senior night, the last time the Lady Tigers played. It's the same team, and including about a 26-footer to end the third period for three. Lane at the stripe here, knocks down the first free throw. She now has seven points. She's so versatile. She can play. She could probably play one, two, three, four, or five, I would think. Right now, the second half, she's been playing down inside in the block and uh, gotten herself to the free throw on. Made the first charity. Second free throw up, and this one's down as well. So Lane with eight. Right, Frederick coming back in. That'll give Lane a breather. Also, Megan Robbins checking in during that free throw by Lauren Lane that puts the lead to 20 now for play center. They have held Concordia scoreless for the first four minutes of this third period, and it stretched the lead out to 20. Here's Reynolds, left and deep to Bergman. Off the screen from Jordan Nashbaugh. Bergman now back outside for Reynolds. Works it around right. Natalie Vines out there with her as well. Reynolds with the dribble. To the baseline, Micah Eshbaugh beyond the arc. And she walked with the basketball trying to get around Courtney Hamill. 36-16, Lady Tigers lead by 20. 335 remains here in the third. Lady Tigers are 9 for 13 from the line tonight. 7 11 at halftime, and then more lane stepped up with those first two years. Pretty impressive the way they're dismantling teams right now. There's a great look for three from Kipfer that she has had a three three pointers I can think of that looked like they were falling in and just rimmed out. Another one right there. 36 16, the lead for the Lady Tigers. Panthers have it left wing deep Bergman against Kipfer. Now around right, they go to the corner. Jordan Eshbaugh against Megan Robbins. Good defense. Give it off to Micah Eshbaugh. 15-footer up and down. She has five. And now a quick timeout taken by the Lady Panthers. 36-18. Play center leads it. Let's send it back over to Washington. A check-in with Phil Casper. All right, Rock. Same thing here. Timeout on the floor. 5.39 left. It's a 31-30 Republic County lead. And we are just trading baskets. Right now, Republic County really trying to slow things down, and Washington County not letting it happen. They trail one, 31 30, 539 left of the ball game. All right, great one going on there in Washington, and that's two A sub state. Of course, a lot of basketball around the KCO White community tonight. We'll update you on all those brackets tomorrow, and tomorrow night here on KCO we will have Play Center Tiger Boys against Concordia, 7 30 tip off. Chapman and Smoky Valley have the early game here. We'll also keep you posted on the Washington County boys who are in a uh, really tough substate in 2A. They'll be playing tomorrow night with an opportunity to advance on to the next round as well. So uh, they'll play Solomon tomorrow evening at 730 in Washington. Pressure by Concordia. Mullen double-teamed off to Kipfer. Under three to go, third quarter. Play center by 18. Kipfer down to the right sideline, right Frederick. Now the dribbles back outside and now runs the point. Concordia has gone man-to-man. Right, Frederick, high post, Megan Robbins, looks back door, ball fakes left, goes right, takes it to the hole, she's fouled, and heads to the stripe. 
Wonk, the senior, the super sub, making Robbins on Tuesday on senior night late in the game, made the same type of move and absolutely left a defender standing still for a wide open shot down on the block. This time they defended it, but the third foul called against Cameron Collins. Two that, free throws that was for Robbins. A move. I mean, it was defended, but there wasn't anything she could do but foul her. Or give up the lay in, right? Yeah, that's right. Robbins hits the first free throw. Bonin blessed in. Hamill will get a breather. Mullen, Kipfer, Wright, Frederick. Bonin blessed and Robbins on the court right now for the Lady Tigers. Free throw up and missing. Rebound to Jordan Eschbaugh. 232 remains here in the third. 37 18. Place under the lead by 19 points. Near steal by Wright, Frederick, and she does force the turnover. The basketball back to Clay Center. So good defense by Alley. And now the Lady Tigers will inbound. Right, Frederick will bring it in play. Concordia stretching the defense down the court. Tip pass, tips out of bounds, and it stays with play center. And again, pressure by Concordia. Didn't get the steal, but made it uncomfortable for the Liddy Tigers. They inbounded. Now Bonnenblus looking to bring it in play. Lobs it up the right sideline to Mullen. And he's got three-on-one numbers. for the paint. Good look inside. Robbins lost it on her way up and was fouled. And Robbins headed back to the free throw line. This fast break run that time by Addie Mullen. Let the defender come at her. Jump stops. Got it down low to Robbins. They call this on the floor. Excuse me, not on the shots. So it'll be Clay Center's basketball on the baseline. Right, Frederick to inbound. 2.19 to work third quarter. Clay Center leads it by 19. Panthers will sub Micah Eshbaugh back in. Lady Tigers will inbound with Wright Frederick on the baseline. Lobbed out left wing to Kipfer. Corner left to Alley. Back outside, Kipfer with it. Now she'll back it out. Double team coming at her. She'll stop. High post to Bon and Bluss. Turns and squares up. Now back outside for Mullen. 2.03 to work here in the third. Play center lead 37 18. Chapman awaits the winner tomorrow, or Saturday night, I should say, at 6 p.m. Right, Frederick out deep to Mullen. Now back it comes right to Kipfer. Back door look. Right, Frederick down inside the lane. Shot off last no. Bonnet lost. Clears it. Wrap around pass to Robbins. But swatted out around. Out of bounds by Bergman. Of course, Concordia went to the state championships in volleyball. Bergman, a big part of that. It looked like that play. What a pass though from Bonnet Lust. Denied by the shot block of Bergman. There's a timeout taken on the court. 37 18. Clayson her leads here in the third quarter. Let's again send you over to Phil Casper in Washington. All right, Rock, thanks. 33-31. Republic County's gone out front by two. Mandy Allergan shooting free throws. First one off the mark. Rebound to Annie Otot. Put back good. And we're tied again. Annie Otot puts it up and down. It's 33-33 with three and a half minutes left in the ball game. All right, Flip, we appreciate it. 37-18 is the score here. Let's give you a little look at what's coming up this week on KCOI after tonight. Valley Heights, Lady Mustangs winning. They'll get the winner of the Washington County, Republic County game that Phil's keeping us updated on. Then tomorrow night, Clay Center Tigers here on KCOI. The boys host Concordia at 730. That second game here in the den. Saturday night, the winner of this one will play Chapman for at 6 p.m. for the uh, chance to go to state in Emporia this year. And then the winners of those boys games tomorrow night will do the same thing on Saturday evening late. We'll also have uh, coverage from Washington throughout the week to keep you updated and potentially live coverage as well. And Saturday afternoon, K-State Wildcats wrap up their regular season in Lubbock against Texas Tech. Lady Tigers have the basketball back. Wright Frederick lobs it to the sideline, tipped and out of bounds. It will stay with play center on the sideline. No, they actually gonna, thought they were going to take it to the baseline. Now they do bring it back to the sideline right in front of Coach Jeff Edwards. Go to flip always at the right time. <laughs> we do. Always at the right time. Yeah. Got a break, and he's got, a, got him tied up again. Otot with a stick back. We'll get back over there to check in. Washington County had it tied. Here's right. Frederick back through a lob. Robbins in the lane. Tax it out with a pass to Bonham Plus. A minute 40 towards third quarter. Clay Center leading here by 19 over Concordia. Right. Frederick uses a dribble. Now to Robbins. Megan against Micah Eschbach. Top of the key is Kipfer. Savannah, seven first half points. Kipfer back to Robbins. Keeps it away from Eschbach. Lobs it low. She was trying to go to right Frederick. And it will go back to Concordia now. Length of the four to go. A minute 20 to work third period. 
Bergman will inbound. Lady Tigers will match up man-to-man as they cross half-court. Reynolds against Kipper. Left sideline, nearly taken away by Bonnerblast. It goes off of Caitlin. A minute 11 remains in the third. Play center by 19. Lady Tigers will bring Sid Calloway, Lauren Lane, and Courtney Hamill back on the court. Robbins, Kipfer, and Bonnenblush get a breather. That leaves Wright, Frederick, and Mullen on the court with the three fresh pair of legs coming on. Lane, Hamill, Calloway, lob inside. Micah Eschbaugh, they get an inbound play off the sideline. Eschbaugh now with seven points in the game. Right, Frederick walks it up the floor. One minute left, third period. 57 seconds to work. Play center leads by 17. Here's Lane outside to right, Frederick. Alley, right wing deep. Hamill rips it through Jordan Eshbaugh. Left side to Callaway. Sid will attack with a dribble. Out of the free throw line, Hamill. Courtney back out deep for right, Frederick. Back left it comes to Lane. Looks back door. Didn't have it. Now to Mullen out deep. Addy with the dribble, pressure, gives it off now to Lale. Great backdoor look. Alley right, Frederick for two. The pretty feed from Lauren Lane that time, and place in her lead again by 19. 20 seconds to work here in the third. Bergman, front court with the dribble, all the way to the lane. Blocked out of bounds by the silent assassin, Courtney Hamill. Good dribble drive by Bergman, but Hamill erases it, knocking it to the baseline. 13 to work third. Micah Eshbaugh will inbound. Lobbed outside to Jordan Eshbaugh. Back to Micah Eshbaugh. Shot off glass, no. Rebound, Addy Mullen out of the pack with it. Six seconds left. Mullen, five seconds with four, two, one. Right, Frederick, buzzer beater, three, short. Hamill actually almost got a look for it inside before the buzzer. 39-20. Lady Tigers by 19 as we head to the fourth. Let's once again send it over to Washington. And Bill Casper. All right, Rock, a minute 53 left. It is out of bounds to Republic County. We are still tied 33-33, and now a timeout by Washington County. So a minute 53 left in this ball game. We're all tied up, 33-33. At the quarter break here, let's take a 30-second timeout. We'll bring you the fourth quarter here from the dinner. Every major construction project uses concrete in one form or another. From residential driveways to basements, patios and curbs, Midwest Products make great use of their ready-mix concrete. They operate four state-approved plants in Hanover, Clay Center, Lynn and Washington to meet the needs of residential, commercial or farm-related projects. Livestock slats, feed bunks, landscape rock and more are all available from Midwest Products. Give them a call for all your jobs that require ready-mix concrete. 800-371-2252. Just talking with Phil Casper. They're at a timeout late in the fourth quarter and tied at 33. And he's just saying if Washington County could knock some shots down, they would probably be leading by a big margin. But Republic County's made it tough. And so a very tight one that Washington County has come from behind in. And we'll continue to keep you updated as we uh, follow this one here going into the fourth quarter. Clay Center leads 39-20. It'll be Concordia's possession to begin the fourth. Lady Tigers trying to make back-to-back trips to the state championships. There's a drive by Jordan Eshbaugh all the way to the lane. Bucket good and a chance at a three-point play here for the Panther Jr. 39-20. And at the free throw line, Jordan Eshbaugh trying to convert an old-fashioned three. She now has six points in the game. And it'll stay there. She missed the free throw. Rebound to Courtney Hamill. 17-point Lady Tiger lead. Tick Calloway brings it up the floor. Last year, Clay Center faced Concordia in the third place consolation finals and won a very close one against Tristan Leisler's company. Actually saw Tristan in the Panther uh, crowd tonight cheering them on, former teammates. Here's Calloway. Stops, gives it off to Wright Frederick. 39-22. Bonham Bluff has it out beyond the arc. Now gives it off to Lauren Lane. Looks low, not there. Just underway here in the four. We'll check back in with Bill Casper here in a moment. Bonham Bluff's backdoor look right. Frederick, a second lane in this half. She now has nine. And a little give off from Bonham Bluff on the money for the easy lay-in. 41-22, Clay Center by 19. 
just one minute into this fourth period. Left wing it comes. Dribble drive by Caitlin Miller. And it's swatted away by Vonderbluff and out of bounds. Bill, let's check in real quickly and see where they're at there in Washington. All right, Rock. Rock Washington County, the same thing we were talking about. They just cannot hit a shot. They've really got good luck, but uh, unfortunately not able to hit. Now they're in a position where they need to foul. They trail three. It's 36-33. Republic County has one more look. We'll give you a look at this one from the stripe, and that one rattles out. Rebound Washington. 36-33, Republic County. One minute left in this ballgame. All right, we'll get over there for a finish in a moment. Now, Clay Center had taken a steal. Courtney Hamill took it away. Now, the Panthers almost took it back, but they knock it out of bounds. It'll stay with Clay Center. Who leads 41-22. Six and a half to work here in the fourth quarter. Lauren Lane out. Savannah Kipfer back in. Callaway, right Frederick, bottom blessed. Hamill on the court for Clay Center. Here's Bonham Bluffs. They give to Callaway with the left. It's blocked, but a foul called on Jordan Eshbaugh. This will put Sid Callaway at the line. And Bonham Bluffs again, a little drop off. Callaway took it strong with the left hand. And while we go to the stripe here, Bill, let's go ahead and catch us up today where Washington County's at. All right, Rockwell, you caught me in a timeout again. There's 55 seconds left in the ballgame. Washington County just called a full timeout. It's still trail three. It's 36. 33, Republic County lead. We're in a full timeout, Washington County, with the basketball. All right, thanks, Cliff. Again, we'll continue to check in and keep you posted on that one as it goes down to the wire. Here, Sid Callaway made the first free throw and makes the second. She's two of two at the line and now has nine points in the game. She and Allie Wright Frederick both with nine to lead the way for Clay Center, and the Lady Tigers lead at 43 22. Down court, Concordia. Left on the wing deep, Bergman against Kipfer. To the lane. Bonham Blast may have deflected that one as well, but Bergman stays right with it. And she now is in double digits with 11. The lead for Clay Center, 43 24. Kipfer hands it off to Callaway. 6 4 to work here in the fourth. The Lady Tigers with a big lead. Trying to get to that sub state championship game on Saturday evening. They'll take on Chapman if they get through it. Shift for the drive left side, and ball batted around, tied up. The arrow belongs to Clay Center on the baseline. 43-24. The lead for the Lady Tigers. They have allowed just eight points in the second half thus far, the Lady Tiger defense. Kipper high post to Hamill. Turns and squares up. Now back out deep for Mullen between the rings. 5.40 left to work here in the fourth. Mullen had it stripped away, gets it back. Now gives it off to Hamill. Micah Eshby out on her. Hamill to Bonham Bluff. Top of the key. Holds and gives it away to Callaway. Sid with the dribble out near the timeline. Now she'll stop. Gives it off to Bonham Bluff. Caitlin turns and looks inside. Now well, Camel breaks open, but it's blocked and low by Jordan Eshbaugh. Good feed, great curl cut by Hamill, but denied that time by Eshbaugh on the block. 43-24, here's Bergman. For the free throw line, cut off by Bonneville. Spins, goes strong, she's fouled. 5 7 to work. If Cordy headed to the line, that gives us another chance to check in with Bill Casper. Well, Rock, Washington County's in trouble here. They trail three, 36-33. There's 15 seconds left, and Republic County stands at the line. Shooting two. Madison Scott's first. Oh, Madison Scott's first free throw misses everything. She'll have one more. Washington County calls the timeout. Thirty-six, thirty-three. There's 15 seconds left. Republic County lead. All right, Phil. We'll see if Washington County can find a miracle there late against Republic County. They at least got one free throw miss. So right now, still within a bucket if the second one comes off the mark. Here it's Bergman at the line, unable to connect. Rebound is tracked down by Courtney Hamill. 5.03 to work. Clay Center leads here 43-24. Wright Frederick works it up the court against Garcia. That gives it away to Callaway. Back outside it goes to Kipfer. Right side wing. Hamill down low. Callaway, great catch in traffic, and a foul is going to be called on Keelan Miller, the freshman. Callaway just too strong coming to the lane to come up with that ball kind of up for grabs. Courtney is overplaying everything, so... Play center is doing a good job. People that can handle the basketball, and then they're getting some good backdoor looks too. Handle it, and then be able to pass it. There's a foul on Kipper on the inbounds, as it was stolen by Miller. 
You've got a great point, though. They can handle it, the Lady Tigers across the board, but they all see the floor so well, too. It'll be Concordia's possession as the foul is called on Savannah Kip for her third. Left wing deep, a lob down low. It's Jordan Eshbaugh, and it's blocked by Amel. The rebound on reflection to Lauren Lane. It will bring it out of trouble, control the dribble, and bring it across. 43-24. Callaway to Kipfer, and a foul on Bergman. This will be a one-and-one -one chance for the Lady Tigers. So, Phil Casper, tell us how the final 15 is going. Six seconds left. Washington County trails three. Long three ball up and off glass and will not go. That foul, a really good look from Lauren Wyatt. And then on the rebound, we've got another Republic County buff that has went down hard. And I think this is going to be a foul on Washington County on the rebound. And it is. 1.4 seconds left. It is 36 33. Republic County leads. Madison Scott heads for the line, shooting two for the buff. All right, Flip, we'll get a finish on that one here. Concordia was able to get the missed free throw down the court and a lay-in for Sidney Bergman, and now it's 13 to lead all scores. The play center's up by 17, 403 to work here in the fourth quarter. Lauren Lane with it, holds outside, now rips it through. She's got a defender, Haley Miller, really. Tracking her. Now it's right. Frederick to the paint. She's tripped up. No foul called. Basketball out of bounds, they say to Concordia. Right. Frederick went through a double team. Legs got tied up. Went to the ground pretty hard. No foul called. And now a timeout's taken here. So, Phil, let's get a finish on your game. Scott's second free throw up. No good. 1.4. Washington County with a prayer at the buzzer. And it is no good. Washington County falls 36-33. To Republic County. Republic County advances. They'll take on Valley Heights on Saturday night at 6 o'clock. All right, Cliff, we appreciate it. We'll uh, we get another break. we got a 30-second time out here. We'll keep it right here at the, the Den. When we get a break here in a moment, we'll uh, let Cliff start his road trip home. But uh, what a battle for Washington County. Struggled all night. Still had chances, but they fall short by three. So now it's the Valley Heights Lady Mustangs that will play at 6 p.m. on Saturday evening for a trip to the state tournament in Manhattan, Bramlage Coliseum. That matchup will be now against Republic County over in Washington on Saturday night. Here the Lady Tigers lead 43-26. 3.50 remains in the fourth. Garcia at the left sideline, guarded by Callaway. Now stops. Off it comes to Miller toward the baseline. Ball out of bounds to play center. Lady Tigers get it back on the Panther turnover. 17-point Lady Tiger lead. Lauren Lane brings it in to Kip for up the floor to Callaway. Sit across the timeline. Stops on the left side. A little hesitation dribble against Bergman. 43-26. Savannah Kipfer with it. Now high post to Hamill. Courtney turns and looks. Left it goes to Callaway. 3.23 remains here in the contest. Callaway calls a play out. Lobs it down low for Lane. Good catch. Blocked by Micah Eshbaugh. Out of bounds to play center. Lane had to go up high to bring that down, and by the time she took it back up, Micah Eshbaugh was there and denied the shot. The play center does keep the basketball near the corner with 3.14 remaining here in the fourth. So three minutes, 14 seconds from play center hosting a sub-state championship game Saturday night against Chapman. All in TKO battle. Savannah Kipfer with the dribble outside, gives it off out deep now to Callaway. Sid with it. Out deep it comes the lane. Lauren will give it off to Wright Frederick. Alley now holds against Garcia. Stops with the dribble off to Hamill. Courtney turns and looks. Micah Eshbaugh falls to the ground. Now off to Callaway. And Clay Center continues to run the clock here with 2.45 remaining. And a 17-point lead. Callaway to lane. Lauren. Muscled up by Jordan Eshbaugh. Gets rid of it to Kipfer. Corner right is Alley Wright Frederick. Back out deep for Special K. 231 remains. Left sideline it goes to Callaway and now to Hamill, and she's going to be fouled. This will be a one and one chance here for Courtney Hamill at the stripe on a one and one opportunity. Hamill, the senior, shoots the one and one. Addie Mullen will check in. Callaway out. Play center by 17 here. 228 remains in the fourth. The foul on Micah Eshbaugh is her fourth foul. Good ball, boom movement by the Lady Tigers there. Hamill unable to connect on the front end of the one-and-one. One. 
She has six points tonight. Bergman back the other way. Kick out right baseline. Garcia for three. Strong. Weak side board. Good box out by Kipford. Eshbaugh comes up with it. And now she'll get to the line to shoot two. While we go to this free throw shot, we're going to take a 30-second timeout. We're coming back right after this. Central Valley Ag believes that each employee contributes directly to the cooperative's growth and success. This is your invitation to become a member of the CVA team. Go to their website. You can see a current list of job openings, information on benefits, even sign up for one of their email lists. Visit cvacoop.com slash careers. Central Valley Ag, growing agriculture together. Central Valley Ag, where the customer comes first. Patterson Healthmark Pharmacy in Clay Center is your durable medical equipment provider for bath aid safety, walkers, scooters, wheelchairs, and other supplies and products. They offer quality durable medical equipment to care for yourself or your loved one at home. You can rely on them for unsurpassed value and service. Patterson Healthmark Pharmacy is dedicated to helping you find the right product and the right solution to make your daily life a little more comfortable and enjoyable with durable medical equipment. Well, Mike and Ashball made both free throws. Now on the other end, Lady Tigers are fouled by Garcia. Jennifer Garcia picks up her third. And Lauren Lane will be at the free throw line to shoot the one and one. 43-28, Clay Center by 15. Lane misses on the front end of the one and one, though. And the Lady Tigers have missed a couple of front ends. Here's Bergman back the other way. Pull up jumper mid lane. No. Rebound battled for. Eshbaugh has it. Back up and short. One more chance. And she's fouled before she shoots it by Savannah Kipfer. Jordan Eshbaugh now to shoot a one and one. She has six points in the game. 13 points for Sydney Bergman leads all scores. Play center leads it here 43 28. Their lead has been as many as 21. They called this on the shot, evidently, and the fourth on Kipfer. Haley Franson in now for the Lady Tigers. Kipfer out with that fourth foul. Jordan Eshbaugh made the first. Uh, what is a two-shot foul? And she'll get the second one coming here. She has seven points. Jordan Eshbaugh's free throw is up and good. And the lead's down to 13 now. The minute 45 remaining in the contest. Full court pressure. Lauren Lane brings it down court to Robbins. Her pass toward Mullen is batted away, picked up by Bergman. Now blocking foul on Lauren Lane and the one and one chance for Concordian. Now it's getting a little uncomfortable, this lead for Clay Center. Down to 13 and Concordia back at the line. Well, we missed a couple of two or three front end of one and one, and uh, that hurts when the, the other team comes down and they're making their free throws, but hopefully, no, they missed that one. Sydney Bergman. Way to bring up those stats, Walt. Well, nice yeah. work. Yeah, Clay said, I know at least two, maybe three, where they missed the front end of a one and one. Here's Sydney Bergman, who had not missed a free throw all night. It was three of three before that one. Inbounds play, Lauren Lane to Addie Mullen. Minute 38 to work, Mullen in the front court. Freshman gives it off to Wright Frederick. Alley against Garcia, out deep. Wright Frederick, high post to Robbins. Nagan chins it up. Now gets it back outside deep. For Mullen. Minute 23 to work. Play center by 13. Mullen to Robbins. She'll hold outside against Eshbaugh. Now at top, Haley Franson has it. Franson with the dribble. Tip pass, trying to go to Lauren Lane. Gets it to her now. Lauren holds outside. Back out deep for Mullen. Down to a minute five to work and play center a 13 point lead here in the den. One minute left. Left side wing deep. Robbins shovels it out deep for Haley Franson. Haley backs it out with a dribble. She's guarded by Kaylee Miller. 43-30. Now Franson gets rid of it, trying to go to Lane. Ball loose on the floor, saved by Jordan Eshbaugh. And Concordia has it back. Here's Bergman toward the lane with 40 seconds to work. Now backs it out. Play center leads it here by 13. Bergman turns, goes to the paint, leans and can't get it down. Rebound battle four and low off of Jordan Eshbaugh. And play center has it back with 31 to work. 43-30, the lead for Clay Center. And now Coach Jeff Edwards able to empty the sideline as Brianna Wilson leads them out there. Janessa Wickersham and Aaron Ham will come on. Out will come Lane, Robinson, Wright Frederick. 
And the Lady Tigers get their date Saturday with Chapman here in the Den for a trip to Emporia in the state championships. Here's Wilson into Wickersham in the backcourt. Back to Wilson. Now thrown toward the baseline and out of bounds. Turned back over to Concordia. 28 seconds remaining. Lady Panthers will inbound from the baseline. Garcia right of the glass to bring it in play. 28 and a half seconds remains in the contest. Inside to Eshbaugh. And they're going to count the bucket on a foul call down low. Well, continuation allows Micah Eshbaugh to get the bucket and a chance at a three-point play. And now the lead's 11 with 27.7 seconds left. So Eshbaugh the stripe missing. Long rebound. Wickersham, Eshbaugh battle for it. It's off of Wickersham, they say. As they went to the sideline right in front of the Tiger student section, Concordia gets it back. 26 seconds down there. Eshbaugh into Garcia in the corner. Triple drive. Cut off by Franson. Kick out left wing. Three-pointer up. No. Rebound. Rattles off to Haley Franson with 16 to work. Now to Mullen. And he will bring it up the floor. Good crossover gets by a defender. Now in the front court stops and gives it away to Aaron Hamill with nine. With seven seconds now. Hamill drives. Kick out to Wickersham. Baseline right. Franson with two. With one can hold it. And that is the ball game. The Lady Tigers advance and will play for the Substate Championship Saturday at 6 p.m. Back here in the den, they will face the Chapman Irish. Stay with us. We'll give you a look at scoring. Wrap it up here on a Thursday in just a moment. This is 100.9 FM, KCLY Clay Center. I was arranging gift items when in strolled Maureen. Can I help you, Miss O'Hara? Here it is, nearly St. Patty's Day, and I'm feeling so forgotten. Why, Miss O'Hara, you're one of the most beautiful things to ever come out of Ireland. What you need is a little gift. Here at Central Office, we've got lovely St. Patrick's Day and spring gift items like leprechauns and acrylic pots of flowers, hummingbirds and butterflies, and willow tree figurines, all designed to make a beauty like you feel special. Oh, Central Office service and supply guy, you probably say that to all the pretty girls. This is Mallory with Farmway Co-op, and I have some news for our area graduating high school seniors. Farmway Co-op is offering five $1,000 scholarships to assist the further education of our Kansas students. Farmway Co-op is committed to improving, encouraging, and empowering the healthy development of our students, so make sure you apply today. Deadline is March 15th. Applications can be found at any Farmway location or download from www.farmwaycoop.com. Lady Tigers move on, a 43-32 win. They led by as many as 21 there in the second half. Really opened things up in the third quarter. And in Concordia, kept it interesting. Give uh, the young Concordia Panther team a lot of credit for just continuing to fight. 13 points from Sidney Bergman led the way. Micah Eshbaugh with 11. Jordan Eshbaugh with 8. Three players total all your scoring for the Concordia Lady Panthers in this ball game, And the Tiger defense, again, proves to be pretty pretty dark on there. Yeah, they kind of what we talked about earlier if they could get some shots to go down and get a get a lead and then let their defense take over that's really what and we did have that nice lead at halftime it wasn't overwhelming but it was a nice lead but what we really did the second half was control the basketball we are we hardly I, I we took seven shots the second half in uh and nine free throws um, wow. so we just controlled the basketball and tried to tried to work that clock and made four of those seven shots so and then forced a ton of turnovers against Concordia as well especially there early in that third period when they opened things up against the Lady Panthers for Clay Center leading scores Sid Calloway Allie Wright Frederick have nine each Lauren Lane with eight seven for Savannah Kipfer Courtney Hamill with six Caitlin Bonnenbluss three and Megan Robbins one free throw so a lot of balance for the Lady Tigers and great defense and now they'll face off against Chapman in an NCKO matchup, they'll face the Irish for the third time this season. They've won the first two meetings with the, the Chapman Irish, who uh, had been on a roll when they came in here to Clay Center uh, the second half of the season. The Lady Tigers really uh, got control of that game pretty early and uh, were able to put the, the pedal down late in that one with their defense as well. So it'll be a good matchup in the league ball game on Saturday night. They'll tip it off at 6. Tomorrow night, remember, Clay Center Tiger basketball is on the air. They tip off at 7.30 also against the Concordia Panthers. Walk, as always, appreciate the time. Well, it's fun, and uh, one more game to make it to state. Go Lady Tigers. One more to head back again, this time to Emporia, the destination of Whiten Auditorium is where they want to be on Wednesday of next week to do that Saturday against Chapman 
at 6. Tomorrow night, Clay Center Tiger Boy Shoots will be on the air. We'll be here with you from the den. That'll do it for Bill Casper over in Washington, Bernie Fensel, our studio engineer, Walt Wallace. This is Rocky Downing telling you to enjoy the rest of your Sports Thursday. The Citizens National Bank has a long history of supporting the students of our community on the mat, on the court, or in the classroom. Our support doesn't stop when the season is over or the school year ends. We believe in the value of higher education that is building our future leaders of our community and country. CMB offers a student checking. This account will transition you from being a local student to attending the college of your choice. Stop by and talk with one of our CSRs today. The Citizens National Bank, member FDIC. Timing is everything on wheat fertilizer. It can maximize both yield and nutrient use efficiency, thereby increasing net profit for the producer. At Wilbur Ellis and Reed Seed and Feed, we offer a complete line of fertilizer and herbicides best suited for your fields. Timely control of weeds can limit soil moisture loss to weeds and prevent the deposit of more weed seeds in the soil, two factors that can benefit the next crop's yield. Our field specialists Brent, Allen, Darren, Kent, Mike, and Kenny at Wilbur Ellis and Reed Seed and Feed are here and ready to help you. Play Center Tiger Basketball on KCLY is brought to you in part by Union State Bank, Wilbur Ellis and Reed Seed and Feed, Central Office Service and Supply, Bruna Implement, Twin Valley, the Citizens National Bank of Play Center, Greenleaf, Belleville and Concordia, and Oldie Seed Farms.